Welcome to Chartered Accountants Academy Video Lectures. My name is Philip Chambati and I'll be taking you through the text module the semester. Now Albert Einstein once said, the hardest thing to understand in the world is the income tax. Well, this semester our job is to be able to debunk that hypothesis. Our first port of call today will be the administrative framework. What we're going to try to cover today is firstly we're going to discuss what the purpose of taxation is. Why do governments actually have taxes? Next, we're going to identify the different type of taxes that we have in Zimbabwe. And we're also going to have to understand the different type of payment dates and identify the payment dates that are important as far as taxes are in Zimbabwe are concerned. And lastly, we're going to cover the ethical dilemmas that, are for, that apply to the child accountant when he's dealing with taxes. In other words, the difference between tax avoidance, tax planning, and tax evasion. Now, what is the purpose of taxation? Most governments use taxes in order to collect revenue, of which that revenue is used for social programs and also funding certain government activities. The next thing that governments use taxes for is also to, as a method of redistributing wealth. In other words, moving wealth from the rich and being able to redistribute amongst the entire populace of the of a certain nation. It does have its advantages and disadvantages and at times if certain people are overtaxed it might cause capital flight so governments have to be careful especially with the redistribution of wealth and the purpose of which taxes are used. It's also a means of repricing. When imports are starting to flood a particular market like for instance your second hand motor vehicles, if we have a certain if we have certain industries that you are trying to protect by that are being affected by these imports what we'll do as a nation or as a government is that we'll introduce a certain duty on that product such that to make it more expensive and also allow our local product to be a little more competitive this happened with your chickens for instance when chickens that are coming from brazil there was a tax introduced that reduced the amount of imports for those chickens one may do it if all of them the motor starts producing at a certain level. We might start introducing or increasing the tax on second motor vehicles coming in from Japan. These are methods that the government can use to actually reprice certain products. Another thing that a tax can be used is as a discouraging certain consumption of certain goods. For instance, we've got exercise duty on tobacco. This is a prohibitive measure in order to discourage people from smoking cigarettes. You can also be used as a regulatory framework, excuse me, for regulation. In other words, the particular agendas that the government needs to push, uh, political agendas that they need to push, and taxes can be a way of pushing such agendas. For instance, if you look at the American government, you have your Democrats and your Republicans. Each have a certain agenda they want to push, and taxes can be a means of pushing such agendas. So in America, your Democrats are for, are for increasing taxes because they prefer to fund social programs such as your health care system. So by taxing people, increasing taxes, we have more funds available to fund such social programs. Whereas your Republicans are more for reducing taxes and allowing big corporations to recoup most of their income, therefore reduce taxes and increase the profits that corporations make. In Zimbabwe, an agenda that the government tried to push was to tap into an informal market which was not being which was a, is a big sector of economy but is not funding the government so how the government decided to tap into this sector was by introducing what you call your IMTT intermediately transfer tax your two percent tax this tax allowed government to tap into the informal sector because now any transfer of funds between certain parties will be taxed at two percent and this tax is the revenue for the government. Another reason why you would use taxes for is to control international trade. So the higher the tariffs, the less products that come in from the international community and allows you to protect your internal, but also when you lower tariffs, you allow people to come into your nation and other products to come in. Depending on how you sort out these tariffs, certain goods may be highly taxed so as to protect the locals. Others may be have less tariffs or even zero tariffs to allow free trade between economies. It also prevents dumping. So you can use again your 
import duty to prevent goods being dumped into your economy. Now these are the various reasons why we have taxes and there are lots more but this is just the covering the, the main ones and the basic ones. So let's look at the type of taxes that you have in Zimbabwe or the different types of taxes that you earn you can be taxed on. So you have direct taxes and you have indirect taxes. With direct taxes, well, these are generally termed progressive taxes and increase with the amount of wealth you have or the richer you are, the more tax you pay. So the, for instance, you have your corporate tax, your income tax that you pay, which is 25%, it's said, but the more money you make, obviously the more tax you actually pay because it's 25% of your gross income. Your pay as you earn is another type of direct tax, which is also progressive. So the more income you make, the more employment income you earn, the more tax you actually pay. Same with your wealth due taxes, just like estate duty tax is also known as a progressive tax and direct. Indirect taxes are generally regressive. These do not discriminate based on the amount of income you make. So you generally pay them whether you like it or not. No matter how much you earn, you will still have to pay it. No matter how poor you are, you will still have to pay the tax. These, are, for instance, are your value-added taxes, which is a consumption tax. So as long as you buy a particular product, you will be charged VAT on it, especially if you're buying it from a, a vet vendor, someone who is registered for VAT. He will charge you 15% on the particular product you buy from him. So whether you're rich or poor, you're still going to have to pay these taxes, hence why we we'll call them regressive taxes. Another particular example, which is closer to home, is your IMTT. This is a regressive tax based on the consumption of a particular service, in this case, which is your banking service, transferring money from one account to another. You'll be charged, whether you're a poor man or a rich man, you'll still have to pay that 2% IMTT. And it's generally a regressive tax. Now, what are the important dates that we need to remember as far as taxes are concerned in the Zimbabwean context? First and foremost are your quarterly payment dates for your income tax returns. We will generally forecast how much, what your income tax will be for the year and every quarter you pay a certain amount of that tax. So these dates are important because if you miss them, there are penalties that accrue if you miss these payment dates. So these dates for the first quarter of the year will be 25 March. This is when the QPD is due. Then for the say, second quarter, it'll be 25 June. For your third quarter, it'll be your 25 September. And for the last quarter of the year, it'll be 20, the 20th of December. Now the dates are important, will be your value added tax dates. These will obviously depend on the category the operator is registered for and will differ whether you're category A, category B, or category C, or even category D. We'll go in more in depth in what these categories mean and which dates are important as far as these categories are concerned. But as a general reminder, for VAT, the payment date is the 25th of the month after the end of the tax period in which your category is in. Quick example, for category A, the important dates will be 25 January, 25 March, 25 May, 25 July, 25 September, and 25 November. Other dates that are important for you to know are your withholding tax dates. And this will obviously depend on the type of withholding tax you're getting charged and will differ with the type of withholding tax. For instance, your capital gains withholding tax, this is due on the third day after payment has been made. Withholding taxes on fees and remittances, these are usually due 10 days after the payment date. Now that we've covered the general administrative framework in terms of the type of taxes and the payment days that are important to us, we also need to look at tax planning. What is, it, what is tax planning? So tax planning is defined as the analysis of a financial situation to ensure the most efficient tax outcome. And more and more, chartered accountants are being asked to be good tax planners because you could save the company a lot of money by planning your taxes efficiently. So for example, one might look at tax planning under the light of funding a business. Which is the best way to find a business? Should you issue shares or should you take out a loan? What is the effect as far as tax is concerned when it comes to issuing shares and taking a loan? For instance, when you take a loan, if it's for working capital reasons, you can actually get a tax deduction for the interest you pay. Whereas with issuing shares, 
there are no tax deductions available. However, on the person who buys the shares, one might also have to look at the impact on them. So in, for instance, are we, how do we fund our employees? How do we give them the bonus? Do we give them a cash bonus? Or do we, in fact, give them shares? And what's the effect for the employee when he's given shares? And what's the effect when he's given a bonus? What is the different tax outcome? And these are things that you have to be aware of as a child accountant nowadays. We also need to be aware of the difference between tax avoidance and tax evasion. Avoidance is an arrangement where of one's tax affairs or financial affairs such that you minimize your tax liability within the law, whereas evasion this is the illegal non-payment or underpayment of taxes. Now the accountant's dilemma is a very subjective area. One needs to realize that is tax avoidance, and it, although it might not be illegal, is it unethical or is it ethical? This is the dilemma one faces, especially when it comes to tax planning. One needs to look at the greatest outcome for the greatest good. If I don't pay my taxes in full, or if I don't pay the maximum amount of tax, it means I've reduced my taxes and my company benefits and I benefit, but has the society benefited? That's why it's an ethical dilemma when it comes to tax planning. Evasion is very illegal, and if it's perpetrated, if we're looking at offenses that can be perpetrated under the Income Tax Act, which is Section 81 to 86, these are illegal acts, and for child accountants, we now start looking at your CPC, depending on where you are, whether you're in practice or outside of practice, you need to look at the conduct you've done and what threats have been given under your CPC and also look at your non-compliance with laws and regulations because if you commit evasion, you have committed an illegal act and therefore have, have a non-compliance with laws and regulations. So this is how tax joins in with auditing and also joins in with management, accounting and finance as far as planning is concerned and the tax effects of certain decisions that we make. Now we need to also consider whether evasion and planning are the same thing. A point to look at would be, let's look at your capital allowances for instance. With capital allowances, our Income Tax Act allows us for certain goods like to either choose between a special initial allowance or a wear and tear allowance. This is an opportunity for a for you to plan your taxes efficiently to see which is the best method for us to use. Is it SIA or is it a wear and tear allowance? Because SIA is 25% and a wear and tear allowance for implements is maybe 5%. So it will all depend on what kind of situation your business is in for you to get the best tax effect from that. Now I thank you for joining me. Have a good day.